Yeah, so thank you for coming to my talk. Um, I know we're at the end of the conference and I'm really grateful that you're here. Um, hope you all had a good time last night, because I certainly did. Um, so my talk is about the MEC. Um, it's Field Notes from MEC Facilitator. And it's kind of like my plug for the MEC on behalf of Moodle because I love this product and I wanted to share my love. But also for those of you that are thinking of doing the MEC or currently doing the MEC, I want to help you pass it first time. Okay, so I am from Catalyst. I am I'm the practice lead for pedagogy and community, and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. So about me, I was a dancer and I fell in love with teaching, so I trained to become a lecturer. When I was lecturing, I used Moodle and I fell in love with Moodle, and so much so that I then jumped to the other side and became a learning technologist. And then it was when I was a learning technologist, I fell in love with Catalyst and jumped to Catalyst, and then next week is my five year anniversary and I absolutely love it. So when I meet people, I tell them that I was a teacher who fell in love with Moodle 17 years ago, because that is my journey. Catalyst IT, proud to say, we are the global certified Moodle partner of the year, woohoo! The LMS contributor of the year, even better, and we are experts in open source uh, solutions. Ooh. Yes! <laughs> yeah. And by the way, that was me last year, um, again after the Moodle party, but that was 11 o'clock in the morning and I was very, very happy to see so many people in that session. Um, you know, we're in the afternoon now, but we're doing good, we're doing good. So what is the MEC? So it is a program of learning designed and developed by Moodle. Uh, the Moodle Academy team maintain it and look after it. And it's a way of recognizing Moodle educators as certified educators, okay? It is definitely not for beginners either. Moodle Academy have amazing courses for people who are brand new to Moodle or want to do the basic training. The MEC are for experienced educators that want that Moodle seal of approval on top. And it is mapped against the DigiCompadue framework, which I'm just going to show you a bit about in a minute. But can I ask, is anybody here a MEC facilitator? Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Anybody have the MEC themselves? Yeah. yeah. Anybody thinking of doing the MEC or currently doing the MEC? All right, some of you, so at least, okay, most of you are here just to hear me talk, I guess. So anyway, so this is the DigCompadu framework. So there are six sections to it. So the first one is about uh, professional engagement. How do I interact with my community? How do I um, do digital CPD? How do I share my knowledge internally with my organization? And how I share it externally as well. So it's looking at you as a professional practitioner and how you maintain and manage that. Then we move into the central section here. So it's all about digital resource creation, the use of OER. How do you go about creating um, technology and how you can use Moodle to present it to your students. Then we're looking at teaching and learning, so how do you foster a sense of collaboration, communication amongst your students, how do you guide your learners through the materials, down through through assessments, so how do you assess your learners, how do you um, look at what uh, your students are producing, how do you look at the reporting based around how your students are doing. Uh, it's also looking at assessment strategies as well. So last week I spent the week in Ireland, I was in uh, Maynooth doing workshops with their academics on Moodle 4.1 and all the assessment tools that they could use beyond just doing quizzes and uploading assignments, all the fun things that they can do, also in the spirit of universal design for learning. And then moving on to empowering learners, so the differentiation, personalization, how do we think about universal design for learning, how do we think about accessibility and how do we actively engage our learners to actually want to learn and want to contribute. And then finally, and I don't know if everyone else feels the same, but the facilitating digital uh learners digital competence I found that myself the hardest module to do but it was the most rewarding I had so much fun with it and all my uh, candidates that go through the MEC with me all say the same as well but I do push them hard so why I love the MEC? So I see it as the completion of the holy trinity of EdTech recognition, okay? This EdTech Nirvana state that I am in. So I am a fellow of the Higher Education Academy of Arts HE, and I did that because I wanted to prove to my lecturing colleagues that I have the same background as them, I have the same qualifications. I did my uh, certified uh, member of ALT because I wanted to prove to my EdTech community that I have a good standing. 
The MEC I did for me because I know I'm good at using Moodle. Um, I know I'm good at creating courses with Moodle. I wanted this stamp because oh, it's something for me that I really wanted. I also love learning from others. So as a facilitator, I get to read everyone's response to the questions and I find it really, really empowering, empowering engaging and inspiring for myself. But I also, as a facilitator, I get to give my candidates confidence. I can say that is really, really good. I've not even thought of that and I've been using Moodle for 17 years and I love being able to tell people, do you know what, you've done a really, really good job here. And that's one of the lovely things I do when I message Anna Krasa to say, hello, I've got some candidates for you to review. I said, these ones are really, really good. And she comes back and said, they are brilliant. Well done for finding really good ones. I don't find them, they come to me. I'm just very lucky, I guess. So it's all about reflective practice. The assessed tasks are designed to challenge you. You know, what would you do if this situation happens? Have you ever tried this in the past? What happened? Or it could be now you have read some information, seen some case studies. What would you do now uh, moving forward? So the questions are normally framed around how would you advise a colleague or could you please describe your current practice? Um, I've got some feedback from one of my candidates, so um, Emma has kindly sent me some feedback and you know, she was very brave because she was one of my first candidates that I had to assess, so I was learning the process myself and she was very, very patient with me, but she said you know, she was really, really sad when it was over because it actually gave her the breathing space to stop and reflect on her current practice and it also gave her ideas to transform courses, what she called dumping grounds of resources, but I don't think it was ever that bad, but to more um, active and engaging courses and that the way it has been designed for her as a learning technologist the actual tasks were very much on her wavelength so I do thank Emma for giving me that feedback so what do you get at the end oh if you like me I'm a, I'm a magpie I love badges I love collecting shiny things so I've got my six badges you know because I completed each of the courses I have my little special certified uh, facilitator badge but once you've collected all six badges I then like I say I refer you on to um, Anna who then peer reviews me she looks at my feedback that I give candidates it's the same for other facilitators in the room no matter who you go to um, everything gets signed off by Moodle so so you know, we have to work really, really hard because we don't want to get it wrong for you. And then afterwards you get this wonderful certificate. I love this certificate. I can't print it off enough and stick it on my wall so whenever I'm doing a call it's there behind me. But, yeah. So my tips for how to pass first time. I've only got four, don't worry. I thought maybe I'll think of a fifth and round it up. I thought, well no, there's four that really... Yeah, yeah, there's four. <laughs> So my first one is read the manual. I was going to put an F, but I thought, no, I can't do that. No, no, no. Depends how hungover I was today, but I'm fine. But yeah, so read the manual, OK? So as an assessor and a facilitator, I am given a rubric to grade you against, OK? Um, I cannot give you grades and marks and feedback on something that is not there. So please, you are presented with a rubric. Read it. See what it is that I have to grade you against. A big example of this is one of the modules on professional practice. You, you are meant to mention about CPD opportunities and how you share that amongst your organisation. A lot of people forget to even mention digital CPD. So I, that's, you know, that's a big chunk of your grade gone in the first instance. So please make sure you reference each part of the rubric. My second one is structure your response, okay? So the amount of times I am presented with a wall of text that is really, really difficult to follow. I'm, I'm trying to say, okay, have they answered the question? I'm not sure. It just keeps going and going and going. And I, even here, I was being generous by putting a paragraph. Sometimes there's not even a paragraph or break in the text. You know, so use headings, um, even use the questions to have be your headings or use even the rubric headings just to say how you're addressing each point. At the at the end of the day it's all there to help you and you know I've been an educator for years if you make my life easy marking your work I'm gonna be a bit more fairer with you so you know make the teachers happy you can't give me an apple but hmm. yeah thank you um, use screenshots. So the amount of people who don't actually use um, imagery or videos or any media is, um, I'm, I find it quite surprising. So I'm now actively telling my candidates, just put a screenshot. You know, I want to see, I want to see it in action. You know, I'm a massive Moodle fan. I want to see how you've actually made this uh, process work. So for example, this is a screenshot from my actual uh, MEC submission. So. Um, 
I can describe how it is, but there's nothing better than actually seeing it live and in action. And so I can actually see exactly how you've configured it, what it actually looks like. And then finally, um, my fourth tip is to go deep, okay? And what I mean by this is, I know a wiki is good for collaboration. I know you can put a group of students together and get them working on a topic. I know that, I know you know that, ChatGPT knows that, anybody knows that. I want to know what you are doing with that tool. And I've put here specifically name the Moodle tool because the amount of people who don't actually name which tool they're on about. You know, they'll say, things, oh, I created a, an, um, an assessed task. Well, what tool did you use to assess your learners with? So specifically name the tool that you are talking about and share how you've configured it. And I've said a screenshot if possible, because it makes my life easier. Outline the activity that you're doing with your learners. So don't just describe it at a high level. I want to hear how you're using this tool. Um, I want to know that you really, really understand how this tool works and how it can apply in that particular competence. And then I also want to know what your desired outcome is when you actually design this activity with this specific Moodle tool. So what are your students achieving from using this particular activity? Um, how does it demonstrate your competence uh, and help you answer the task question that's given to you? So those are my four main tips. Um, for anybody who's interested in the MEC, you know, Obviously, I'm here from Catalyst. We do it, but there are plenty of people that do it. Um, only certified facilitators can do it, so not anyone can do it. And those of us who are MEC facilitators, we work very, very hard to stay up to date. And you know, we, you know, we really do believe in this product. So, um, yeah, that's my talk. Thank you very much. Good luck with it. And yeah, I'm on the stand if people want to talk to me later. Thank you. Oh, go easy on me, Rob. Oh, of course I will. It's the day after the Moodle party, I after all. I have a video of you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll be very kind on my question. So um, just a quick question. Obviously, the MEC is very much aligned to the Digcomp Edu framework, but you also mentioned that you have your CMALT accreditation from the Association for Learning Technology. And I'm wondering, do you see any major overlap or major alignment between those two accreditations? I mean, yeah, there is a lot of overlap, um, but when I approached the MEC, I went it fresh. I wanted to challenge myself. I had a lot of fun creating new scenarios and new ideas. Um, there are, um, obviously, it's the deployment of technology, mm. is a, you know, the operational issues that come with the CMALT. A lot of that could be used with um, the MEC, especially with the professional practice and how you're staying up to date. So there's lots, there is a lot of overlap. Yeah. And it, it's up to you, the candidate, how much you want to put that in there or how much fun you want to have by actually seeing how far you can actually yeah. push it. So I know as well, I know you also have your Advanced HE Fellowship and, and Alt and Advanced HE have aligned their two frameworks <laughs> together. And it might be nice to maybe consider doing something similar between MEC and, and Alt and just making some of those. I'm just a facilitator. Expositions. I'd love that. And I think, Mary, that'd be a really good thing to discuss. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I look after the MEC with Anna for Moodle HQ, and uh, we are all always looking at ways to improve it and integrate other things. And I just wanted to mention, you did say that word, chat GPT. We have been aware recently, Anna and I, that some people are submitting what is obviously chat GPT. So we are looking very closely at ways to improve our assessments, including insisting on screenshots. You said, I'm surprised not everyone includes screenshots. We're going to insist on them to, so that a human has made it, and it's obvious that it's it's a Moodle course. And that's one of the ways. There are other ways, but I'm not going to reveal them. But yeah. Yeah, something interesting that I tell my candidates as well, because I actually did it myself. I didn't even ask Anna, I just did it, is there's a question about you are presenting to your colleagues in a neighboring college. I thought, Okay, I'm just going to write text. I'm actually going to put together a presentation. I submitted my presentation, uh, all the fun stuff like that. And I know I forgot to plug as well. So yesterday, Mary did a great um, uh, talk about the DigComp LMS admin uh, framework and, uh, and all the courses that are mapped to that. And I understand there is a, uh, a plan in the roadmap to create a site administration version of the MEC. So I'm very excited for that. So. All right, thank you.